Today I visit with Dr. Alfonso Sanders, coming to you from the Blue Tiger Multimedia Studio at the Lincoln University. I'm Rick Jay, and this is Spotlight on the Arts. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts, coming to you from the capital city, Jefferson City, Missouri. Please join me, if you would, in welcoming my guest. I've look, been looking forward to this day for so long, it seems. Uh, say welcome, if you will, to Dr. Alfonso Sanders from Jefferson City, Missouri. He's the provost and vice president of academics uh, at Lincoln University. Well, Dr. Sanders, welcome to the show, Spotlight on the Arts. Thank you, Rick. It's nice to be invited. Well, thank you, sir. You have such a great background and uh, I want to try to touch all bases as I really look up and admire your, your travel, shall we say, in your path of life, starting out of your Mississippi, I guess, uh, background. Yeah, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a Georgia born. Georgia born, okay. Native, yes, Dawson, Georgia. That's the birthplace of Otis Redding. Yes, and, yes. And uh, uh, most people associate him no, with, 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 yeah, with May, Macon, Georgia, but he was born yes. there in Dawson. Oh, okay, great. Okay, well, that's where we like to get started. We like our viewers, really like to get to know uh, you. So if you can, please tell the viewers a little bit more about Dr. Alfonso Sanders' uh, education, uh, and musician, what have you. So tell us if you can a little bit about uh, Alfonso, if I may call you by your first. Yeah, sure, sure, Rick. Um, I don't know if, if, if you have any specific questions for me, but uh, my life uh, began in a small Georgia town, uh, Dawson, as I mentioned, and uh, was reared by a grandmother. I see. Uh, and so from that point, you know, I was more interested in most of the childhood things and it didn't have anything to do with music. And eventually by uh, high school, I became attracted to, to music. Actually, it was 10th grade. 10th grade, I believe, uh, yeah. my research. And so, huh? you know, so that led me into uh, my journey as, as an adult, you know, uh, say a young adult, you know, into my adulthood. And so I've always been chasing uh, the music, which led me to education. And uh, of course, that's what I ended up uh, going to school for. Yes. To get you know, certified in education. In education with your doctorate uh, in education. Well, super. Now, would you like to say uh, hello to anyone in the family, since it's more of a personal show? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I'd like to say hello to all of my beautiful people, you know, if you say Dawson, Georgia, my roots, oh. you know, to there to Atlanta, to Mississippi, and beyond. Yes, I hope they will tune in to the yeah. show, uh, which we are YouTube, uh, etc. Well, today we're highlighting your love as a musician and a dedicated staff uh, a member, should we say, at Lincoln University here at Jefferson City, Missouri. So. If you can, please share with the viewers how you really became inspired to become first a musician uh, in depth, uh, starting from the 10th grade and a, as a key member in the operation here of the prestigious Lincoln University in Jefferson City, Missouri. That's kind of a broad question, but uh, if you could put a little more icing on the cake, we know you kind of got started at 10th grade. What was your inspiration? Yeah, I um, was, into sports, you know, up until that point, that played those uh, air areas, and uh, baseball was was what I really loved doing. But I ended up doing some some of the uh, other sports like football, basketball. But uh, I had a, a friend who left a trumpet there. He was on the baseball team, and, and it got my attention, and I. 
thought I was saving it for him, which ultimately he ended up telling me, said, well, you know, he didn't practice much on it. He said, well, you can keep it, because I started asking a lot of questions. And sure. It probably became very annoying, and he just told me, well, why don't you keep it and bring it to school every day and give it back to him before he went to band class. So I really didn't get in the band until uh, a year following that because I, I didn't know what I was doing at that time. So did you experiment on how to uh, play the trumpet? Or? Oh yeah, a lot of experiments. I, I nearly wore myself out the first And from the grandmother yeah. too. Yes, yeah, <laughs> didn't understand it at all. And then of course the next day, um, I got a lesson, which, oh, which I thought I said, oh, so that's how it works. Right. And from that point on, I started to do things. I, uh, interestingly enough, my grandmother wanted me to play piano, and most of that was related to community church. Oh, sure. You know, and, and I didn't want to do it. And to this day, it's one of my largest regrets as a musician that I didn't get started early enough on the piano, but uh, use it today as a tool oh, sure. you know, to play. So it, it took me from that point, you know, of struggling to get uh, advice from other people. And eventually the band director heard about me and said, well, why don't you just join the band? So I, sure. spent, I spent my last two years in high school in the, uh, you know, in the high school band, but didn't really know a lot. And it took me the best of me to try to catch up. Oh, I can and, imagine, but I, I can tell you're an achiever and them probably don't give up easy. Uh, we've been, we've been uh, basically through the pandemic trying to uh, try to assist what I could uh, help him pull universe, the university uh, from uh, the pandemic on now to maybe a light at the end of the tunnel, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, now, was that high school? Did you want to mention that high school? Was that? Well, yeah, it was in uh, Terrell County was the, the area where Dawson, the city Dawson, okay. was. And so, yeah, Terrell County High School had uh, a lot of fond memories. Oh, I you know, a small town and a lot of other things going on, you know, that boys got into. Oh, we're going to talk about more of the, the musician side, but mm -hmm. go ahead and if you can explain to people your, your duties as provost. Normally that's defined as a gentleman who, or a lady that is in charge of the academics, making sure those programs are available, available and staffed and carried out in the highest fashion possible. So uh, how would you describe your, your show, say your love for the Lincoln University? Oh yeah, very, very fortunate to be, you know, asked to, to uh, take a position like this. Uh, somewhat, you know, of a learning curve for me, you know, in some ways because each culture is different. Each university that I've worked at, uh, they have their, their identity Yes. That's found in you know in the faculty, the resources you have. Students sometimes can can be uh, different, but mostly it's an it's an academic unit that uh, that I have to care for, and so many many pieces to it. But overall, it's just the idea that we come together to find uh, the leadership directions that we need to follow in order to achieve some of the goals that we set. Yes. And so that's a, that's a big job. Yes, now I, uh, the, the viewers that have viewed, uh, naturally we've talked to uh, Essex Gardner, the artist, and, and uh, Professor David Nadabelli uh, here. And uh, so that's part of your staff. Uh, oh yeah, carry out. Oh, yeah. I know and those guys you, well. They, they talked about being such a, a family-like unit and dedicated uh, to the students uh, as a team, as a family. So right. a team I, is a very important word. Yes, yeah. uh, to make sure things function. So I, I'm so honored today to have you back in, uh, under the spotlight. And uh, basically the team leader is with us, you might say, a captain of the football team that makes things happen. Right, and, and we're very fortunate too at Lincoln, uh, the team that uh, I'm presently a part of, of course, is a, is a, is a design by our president, uh, Dr. Wolfolk. Wolfolk. And so she's doing a great job of, of leading us through 
some of the, the pandemic issues as well as some of our, you know, yes. uh, academic needs at Lincoln. Right. Yeah. And we discussed some of those, that so many things were on the table, or on the fire, so many had to be put on the back burner, but uh, not only uh, through the overall academic system, mm -hmm. uh, the Blue Tiger multimedia uh, will be a new feature through the, again, academics, teaching, journalism, mm -hmm. and uh, what have you. So. You can see it happening even through the spotlight of the arts uh, where we've been able to use the facility again today. So I want to thank Lincoln University uh, firsthand and uh, all associated with making it possible today. Well, as a musician, I want to bring up the point that you have been involved strategically, you almost say, and not only as uh, academics, person, but is a background musician. I'm going to bring up some things and ask you to tell us a little bit about them. One of my favorite selections and listening to you is the song Delta Sun 2014. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I invite everyone to tune into these on YouTube uh, and, uh, and uh, take a listen to them. So what, Delta Sun, what's that? Well, that, that, that song came about, and, and on that recording, I think that came out of like two years. Yeah, yeah. So when I, what, what I did was, uh, it was talking to a gentleman by the name of uh, David Lee Durham. And mm -hmm. David was one of the older men there in the Delta that I admired, and he had weathered the storm, you know, as a, yes. as a blues man. Yes. And uh -huh. so I would, you know, have opportunities to play in his band for, for uh -huh. uh, growth. And so as I did that, I would ask him questions sometimes, you know, about sure. his life and sometimes about the music. And I uh, asked him one time, uh, I said, you know, I said, David, you know, what is the blues? And David had a very high-pitched voice. Uh, so he, he called me Fonzo. He said, well, Fonzo, the blues mm -hmm. is when you work all week long. You take your money, bring it home, and give it to your woman, and she turn around and give it to another man. Oh, and my. he said, I, and I thought to myself, boy, that's some heartaches right there. That's the old point. guys always talk about the blues, as you know, a oh, struggle between so the, the genders, you know, oh, between a man and a woman. Oh, so, yes. And they said, that's I guess where, we where it the, starts. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. But that so, song. In terms of the Delta Sun, David would tell stories about his cotton picking days yes. and how hard that was for him as a young boy. And as he told me a story about him being young and being punished for not picking a certain amount of cotton, you know, mm -hmm. for that day. And he talked about how hot it was and the sun and stuff. And it just gave me an imagery about the Delta Sun. And so I wrote a blues called the Delta Sun in yeah. honor of David Lee Durham. Excellent. And that was uh, under Simon Said 66, I believe, uh, on YouTube. I'm not it's sure. available. Yeah, okay. I'm not okay. sure where it is in, in terms of media because it's, it's out there. Well, let's jump to uh, Mississippi Bohemian Music Doctor. Yeah. Well, those, yeah, those, those are nights. I, I was very fortunate to uh, spend time around Morgan Freeman. He was a Yes. A native of Mississippi, and of course, and after he, I guess, reached his height in uh, his acting career, you know, he found himself, you know, uh, having home there in Charleston, Mississippi. Oh, but he, but he started a, a, a blues club called Ground Zero oh, yes. there in Clarksdale, Mississippi. But he also had a kind of an elite restaurant where I played jazz uh, music there every Wednesday night. Yes. Uh -huh. And so at that point, you know, some of the uh, video photographer guys, uh, videography people, or people coming through traveling and, and doing stuff, they created kind of a bohemian atmosphere, uh, just eclectic people gathering and, you know, in oh, some ways. And then mm -hmm. uh, it just became known as one of those spots. Oh, and so sure. when you see that or find that out there, it's really about Clarksdale, about Mississippi. Clarksdale, Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. On uh, community 
view of the community and know you're back with the community, activists, what have you, trying to do you what you can for the community of Jefferson City and also back home, sure, in, in Mississippi. You recently did address on the, uh, uh, the Lincoln University Day uh, a message on, uh, back in March mm -hmm. talking about the, the struggles here at the university. So that is uh, uh, really a, a way to see into uh, uh, Dr. Alfonso's uh, heart and his dedication. Did you have anything you would want to uh, highlight on that uh, that video that uh, oh well that yeah that yeah that particular video was was based on the fact that all of us in leadership were uh, taking our opportunity since we were in COVID uh, to do a pitch to the Capitol. Oh, I see. And so we normally would do LU Day at the Capitol building, but uh, because of our COVID situation, we we made videos, and that's what it was about. Yes. Well, I understand. I have to point out that music runs in the family mm -hmm. and you have a very talented son named Keith Sanders mm -hmm. and Keith has uh, if you've been tuning in for the last few years uh, has been on American Idol would you like to say a few words about your son Keith and his love of yeah. music <laughs> I talked to him on the phone and I just see that he was also just uh, full of Joy, just in mentioning uh, his music, whatever. Yeah, sometimes I hate to admit that he's a, a lot like me in terms of searching for himself, you know, but he, he's out living in Austin, Texas area now, but of course during his uh, last few years in Mississippi, he was uh, coerced to try out for American Idol, and he really, he said that he didn't want to do it, but he went to, in, to uh, support a friend I see. And then he, eventually he auditioned, and of course it went from there, and he got the gold ticket to go to California. So. Yes, and that was a great opportunity, a lot of the yeah, great opportunities. Uh, uh, he's a good musician, he's consider a, good, that. a good person. Yeah. Great. Well, we must take a break, so hang loose for a few seconds uh, in front of the cameras in this <laughs> position. But when we come back, Dr. Sanders will share more of this interesting life story. But I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Sanders to take us to break with a selection from uh, his musical instrument, if you would. Yeah, maybe I'll do something on saxophone. Oh, okay, super. Yeah.
Welcome back. Our contestants reached the final round, where he's faced with three difficult choices. Behind curtain number one, more alcohol than your body could ever survive. Behind curtain number two, dangerous, mind-altering drugs. And behind curtain number three, we have your family, your friends, and your self-respect. All right, Luke, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Luke! Come on, Luke! <laughs> Luke. <laughs> Luke. 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 You want another beer? Welcome back to Spotlight in the Arts. Uh, join me now as we continue our discussion with Dr. Alfonso Sanders of Jefferson City, Missouri. Well, Dr. Sanders, you shared a lot in the first segment and probably have captured everyone's attention, our viewers worldwide, and gained their attention uh, under the spotlight <laughs> of your life story. And it's so interesting, we want to learn more. So. Before getting into the mix of things, identifying, please share with us any acknowledgments that are close to your heart received as a result of your dev dedication as a staff member at Lincoln University or as a musician. So, so, so those was acknowledgments yeah. that really endorsed Alfonso Sanders, maybe. Yeah, well, you know, if I, I mean, in terms of the work I do at Lincoln, I mean, I'd have to talk about all of my support staff and, you know, the faculty and uh, students and, and our great leadership team, you know, that's among us. So I'd like people to understand that uh, anytime you have large scale tasks, I always think that the, that the definition of who you are is more important than the title itself. Exactly. So you need to have a firm grip on what that position is supposed to do to make everything work out for other people. But yeah, uh, and, and, and as a musician, of course I stand on the shoulders of so many other people until it's hard to acknowledge everybody in that world, but I do have a long standing mentor, you know, by the name of Joe Jennings, who has helped me through maybe most of my turbulent moments as a musician. Oh, excellent. Uh, yeah. Joe so, Jennings. Yeah, now Joe's, he's out of? Joe's in Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta. So, yeah. Oh, what a yeah. state now. Yeah, I so, migrated from my small town there in, in Dawson, Georgia, up to the Atlanta area where I met most of the people that started to impress me, you know, right. in terms of a career. Right. And, um, and I guess we jump right on into uh, one of those people I've uh, admired being in music. I took piano at six years old, that's how I began, but I had already started the yeah. guitar when I was about five or six with the country western back in the days of the 40, late 40s and 50s. So, B.B. Uh, King. Yeah. Now you're the director of the B.B. King studio. It was, yeah, it was, was at one point. At yeah. one point. So you've had an admiration for B.B. King, and you also did basically a dedication to him. Would you like to tell the viewers about that, what that meant to you? Yeah, well, as, as I, I had an opportunity, you know, there in Mississippi to uh, take a position at Mississippi Valley State in, uh, in efforts to, be, I guess, become the founding director for the B.B. Uh, King Recording Studio. And B.B. was very fond of education, and uh, it made sense, of course, to uh, do those things in recognition of who he really was and how much he supported, you know, the yes. state of Mississippi. And, of course, this, to this day, you know, Mississippi makes a considerable return on the blues and its history, and people are traveling far and near, you know, to, to witness some of those things that still exist there. And when I had the opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to uh, work with the, the, the development of the studio, I had many opportunities to be around B.B. King, uh, and we shared and talked about things, some of his visions for, you know, the music in the area, the youth in the area. Yes. And, uh, yeah. of course, it led me to interesting conversations about other things with him. Sure. So and whenever he was in, in the area, 
I would always get invites to attend concerts and sometimes even out of the area. I mean, I've flown to places just to attend concerts with him. Got to know his musicians very well, knew some of them prior to meeting him, you know, being yes. king. But I uh, had opportunities to do uh, a number of workshops with him, oh, you know, to be on stage uh, doing those things. Never toured with him, never played, you know, in his band as yes. a professional. But uh, he, had, he, was, he was a very humble man, and he always made sure that he gave other people opportunities, which right. uh, I feel very uh, thankful, a lot of gratitude for that, too. Well, I have must share that uh, my introduction to the blues was through B.B. King, attending a, a concert or show that he put on in Kansas City, mm -hmm. where I grew up, uh, leaving the farm and moving into Kansas City in 1950. Oh, yeah. And so, and that was the early days. Not only we was we was definitely into country music, but when I was introduced to B.B. King and his, uh, his ability and, and talent, uh, that really touched, almost like I had part of my genes were uh, part of the blues, you know. <laughs> and I've loved to play. On the, when I really want to really get in the mood to enjoy my guitar, I do like to run those uh, blues runs. Mm -hmm. Just talk to me, let the guitar talk to me. Yeah. So that's my first introduction. Again, we touched base and uh, you and I on something we both seem like we cherish the the opportunity to um, be confronted with the, uh, the fabulous BBK. Yeah. Oh, well, great. Well, I want to now also uh, tell us about the um, project Dream Girls of 2018, oh, yeah. <laughs> where Dr. Sanders stepped into the arena as a director. And tell us what that was like for those people maybe thinking about everyone ever, uh, ever wanting to try to do uh, a directorship. <laughs> uh, that, that was probably one of the greatest challenges that I think I've ever experienced. I, I, I mean, it wasn't natural, number one, and I think I made a, a suggestion, you know, to get uh, students to do more in the community. We had a a theater there in uh, Greenwood, Mississippi, and, mm -hmm. and so some of the things started coming together. I made some suggestions, and then, of course, after the suggestions were made, I was then asked to say, well, we can't find a producer to do this who, who would know the students as well as you and so forth. Yes. Do you think you could, could do this? And, of course, my first response was, I don't think so, right? right. But, of course, as, as it was talked about, I thought, well, knowing what good leaders do, and I thought I could be a good leader in it, I started to surround myself with people who understood it. And of course, I learned from- That was why I learned from those people how to be a good director. Exactly. Yeah, so. so you organize your team, if a yeah. smart person would organize yeah. the team with someone new. Yeah. So I carry, I carry the title well, but yes. if I think, think through it and, and people who were there witnessing it, they will know there was a lot of moving parts. Okay. Well, that was uh, an interview with uh, MBP Radio, Think Radio, uh, their uh, Mississippi Plus, it was called, and you can tune into that on YouTube also to uh, catch that whole interview of how that went. And uh, Mary, uh, well, tell us about Dream Girls. Yeah, it, it, was, it was good. Of course, we, we lost uh, Mary, Mary Wilson this, Wilson. this, this year. Yes. Uh, and it was, it was nice to, to be able to reach out to her through uh, Mississippi Public Broadcasting because they, you know, they were able to make those connections. But we got a chance to speak and to talk through her uh, life with the Supremes. Yes. And uh, that, was, that was a good conversation you know, with her. And uh, one of one fond memory that I can, can say I put among many, but uh, yeah. So when she after she finished describing a lot of things, it gave me more insight into how I would perhaps direct the uh, the, the play itself. Well, I had to define that getting yeah. the team together, yeah. and uh, I had to bring up Mary Wilson, part of the Supremes, 
And so he was talking about getting your team together and turning to those who really knew, well, what a, what a better example than Mary Wilson of Supremes. Oh, yeah. Uh, the dream oh, girls, as you yeah. can imagine. Now, that, uh, I guess, uh, that was basically carried out at the Greenwood. So there's no production of that as far as video. Well, you, you know, they, they, I think they are, you know, on YouTube it was, it was okay. recorded and some things were put out. So maybe you could look it up yeah, under, research under, under, under the title. Okay, yeah. super. All right, well, um, I have down a note here to talk about COVID-19 virus. Did you have any, can you give us a, uh, an update now? We talked five, six months ago of things that really looked bad yeah but what's it look like now well you know we've been very fortunate i would say in the state of missouri because based on the numbers and of course we're not in the, in the in the two largest cities no but uh based on the numbers here in mid-missouri we've been we've been able to keep the university open and so that's been a, been a wonderful thing for us but uh just in terms of COVID itself is We've, we're experiencing the same threat that everybody else is experiencing around the world. We're trying to manage, you know, we've tried to manage it as best as we could. And now we seem to be on the verge of, you know, uh, getting rid of the problem. Yes. I say, I don't know if that's a good way to say getting rid of the problem, but we actually are starting to get it under control. Exactly. And well, so, I know I, I have to, visualize that it has been hard not only on the staff mm. uh, but also on the students right and, and, and it we all now know it, it's, it's been draining us mentally uh, yes. as well as physically sure. and then when you start looking at those two things together the emotions that run uh, largely you oh, know, yes. in, in the life of somebody who's kind of doing one thing and you have to put the brakes on and right. start living a whole different way. Well, not only coming to work, but mm -hmm. taking it home. Right. Uh, it's just been quite a uh, quite a, an experience, I guess, for everyone. I, I'm just covering it lightly, so that's great. Well, Dr. Sanders, we're about out of time. I want to thank you so much for contributing to Spotlight on the Arts, making it a learning and information all experience for all um i would like to uh, have you take us uh, after i say thanks to everyone to take us um, on out with the uh, selection i want to say uh, my thanks to lincoln university and the blue tiger multimedia studio here uh, providing such a great place to film spotlight on the arts which uh, the same studio, but it's going to be under renovation. Grant is actually uh, going to be uh, able uh, to, to enable them to um, uh, come in with new uh, cameras, new sound system, uh, new soundboard, and turn the studio not only into Blue Tiger Multimedia Studio, but I understand the radio station that is broadcast out of Lincoln University will be part of it. So I want to thank you viewers uh, for watching and tuning in to all the shows worldwide. And I've got to thank my uh, cameraman, a young musician himself, uh, and Cameron Sound, Jeremy Cash Woodall, who at 17 years old is uh, in, uh, really uh, entertaining us on occasion throughout Missouri as uh, sound alike of Johnny Cash. So, uh, as Dr. Sanders takes us to break, I want to thank you once again uh, for taking time out to watch the show. Uh, don't forget, you can catch Spotlight on the Arts on YouTube. I'm Rick J. saying, be safe and stay healthy. See you next time. Dr. Sanders, please. Well, I yeah. guess uh, since I did saxophone, this I'll go out on the Mississippi saxophone. Oh, I love him on the my harmonica. Could, yeah, that's what they call the harmonica in Mississippi, the Mississippi saxophone. Mississippi saxophone. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we just call it a harp when that's going to have dead player. Yeah. And I'm just a basic player. Well, you, have to, you, you sure have do. To know, well. You have to know some of the great players. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you.
name of that selection? I have no idea. It's almost, <laughs> seemed like I could get into the movement of the, a train along the Mississippi, yeah. rolling down the river or what have you. Thank you again, Dr. Yeah. Sanders. No, thank you. Thank you.